Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. It's a special weekday edition, especially since we weren't able to get through all of the news that we wanted to for the week. So we're releasing one on Saturday. You're absolutely welcome for that. You said weekday edition. Weekends. <laughs> Week. It's the weekday edition on the weekends. This is factual news. So we actually have a pretty intriguing sale for you guys to go on right now, that's going on right now. And that is our merch is currently 10% off over on Teespring for the remainder of today. If you use the coupon code PMKINS, also known as pumpkins, but not actual pumpkins. Anyways, Teespring is giving 10% off of our merch. We still get the same uh, cut from it. So big thanks to them for doing that. If you want to pick up our hot floppy merch, our press F to pay respects, Reese, get your body up in this <laughs> shot. Press F to pay respects, as well as we have other amazing designs that you can check out at the link in the video description. It would highly be appreciated, especially as we continue on the journey to get back to the United States to seek my son's medical treatment, which is actually the title article for today, which is a way to bring peace of mind and sleep to parents who children, whose children suffer seizures wins Microsoft Hackathon. This is actually something that happened a month ago, but I only recently found out about it because friends and family shared this article with us and I wanted to present it because it's actually quite a big deal. Um, one of the scariest things with regards to seizures, which is something that my son suffers from due to a genetic disorder that randomly happened while he was developing in the womb, not caused by my wife or me, not caused by vaccines. This is something that he was born with and is a, uh, it is a random mutation that just couldn't be stopped. And it, there was no prenatal test for either. Uh, it's causing his seizures. If you want to know more about his condition, you can check out that video right up there where we explain more about it. However, one of the things with seizures is that there is a uh, potential that people who suffer from seizures can just randomly die. This is actually somewhat similar in idea to something like crib death or SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, where the individual just happens to pass away most of the time in their sleep. It's actually with regards to seizures called SUDEPS, sudden unexpected death in epilepsy, and a scientist are just unsure about what causes it. However, there seems to be that there are warning signs that can happen beforehand. However, one of the things that we've discovered on this journey with our son is that when it comes to applications for recording seizures or tracking seizures, either they're gigantic bulky machines where you have to have leads all over your head and it has to be connected to a computer and it's a gigantic uh, mission in order to make it happen, or with like phone apps to actually track seizures, they all suck. And that's where this Microsoft hackathon came in because um, Francesca Fidelian Roberto D'Angelo had a son who was having seizures since he was three and potentially could have seizures in the middle of the night that would kill him. And that's where they came up with the idea for a wearable called Mirror HR, which actually can track symptoms of epilepsy and can send an alert to somebody on the other end of the wearable to alert them that there is unexpected activity that's happening. Anomaly activity that could indicate a seizure so that they can actually get some rest but also be alerted if something's going wrong as opposed to what this couple was doing which was watching over him in the middle of the night and it's actually quite an amazing thing and it would be fantastic if this got rolled out to the mass market um, because there is a startling lack of uh, the ability to track seizures especially with regards to like the frequency uh, that my son has seizures so one of the the great things about the app is that the biometric data and the daily video logs are stored in the Microsoft Azure servers, allowing you to actually have long-term data over how uh, whoever's wearing the device actually is having seizures and you can keep track of that and you'd be able to see some sort of trend with, with regards to how certain stimuli affect different seizure activity in your child and i know that for us it's been a gigantic uh, trial and error of testing medications testing different uh, diets testing different ways of actually trying to get our son's seizures 
under control and having this data in a server because he's wearing a smartwatch would be fantastic. Obviously, it wouldn't be as accurate as an EEG, but something that could at least give us a, an approximation would be way better than what it is now, whereas we have to constantly monitor him and actually track physically how many seizures is he having. We have to be there all the time to make sure he's not going to drop and hit his head. He has to wear a helmet to make sure he's not going to crack his skull open, which is a brutal way of saying that, but it's an unfortunate reality of what can happen with seizures. If you collapse, it could potentially lead to things that are worse than just uh, the seizure activity that's happening. Anyways, that's all to say that I'm very thankful that Microsoft had the hack hackathon. I'm very glad that Mirror HR now exists and hopefully it can get rolled out to consumers and potentially uh, be available for us at some time in the near future. And just a quick statistic about SUDEP. Uh, this is something I found out when we learned that our son has epilepsy and that is 0.1% of people with epilepsy will have SUDEP, which is ridiculous. One in a thousand people will die randomly because of their epilepsy. Um, and it's that's an even scarier thing to look at. So <laughs> obviously that's a bit of a downer to get going, but at the same time, there's a lot of hope and progression going on in the medical research or even just uh, with companies creating new wearables that could help us to understand what's happening in our son's body uh, with other people who have epilepsy and making sure that you're there for them and being able to treat them better. And while we did have a GoFundMe to help raise uh, support for our son's medical costs when we go back to the States, we. You guys have been more than generous. If you guys want to contribute to our family, the best way you can do that at this point is either the merch or you can contribute to Syngap Research, which is the genetic disorder that our son has. There are two amazing organizations you can check out, Syngap Research Fund or Bridge the Gap. Both of those will help us to uh, potentially find a cure or long-term maintenance for our son's uh, genetic disorder. Anyways, let's get into the rest of the hot news. Let's stop on that. We've got Microsoft stuff to start it, which is there's another Microsoft patent showing that they have a vibrating VR floor mat to help increase the immersion into VR games with haptic feedback under your feet and also to help you uh, avoid potential roadblocks like your couch or anything uh, that might be in your play space because it can detect if there's pressure on the mat and then it would put up a signal to avoid that in virtual reality. It's quite cool. We'll see if it ever gets rolled out. Obviously, it would be intensely expensive to cover your play area in a mat. I'm not sure that's gonna be something that's feasible, except for in the highest of end VR uh, setups. But then also Microsoft's AI has learned to generate video from audio. This is something that hasn't really come to light as of yet. Obviously there's deep fake video, uh, which is just matching video frames to video frames. And then there's also deep fake audio where you can replicate somebody's voice. This allows them to take the tonality and inflection of how people say things and then generate mouth movement on a person's face, which is scary, scary times. Microsoft, you're doing amazing things and terrifying things all at the same time, which speaking of amazing and terrifying things, self-driving cars. Waymo, they are actually, they have begun the process of mapping out the city of angels this week. Los Angeles is now being the latest city to be completely mapped by Waymo, but also they announced that they are gonna start rolling out their fully driverless cars in Phoenix, Arizona uh, later this year. Waymo is informing uh, members of their early ride program that they might start having rides with no driver up front. Wow. We're getting to a scary reality, but not as scary as what Boeing and Porsche are looking to design, which is essentially an electric flying car, also known as a VTOL or vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, which takes off vertically, flies, and it could be great. Obviously, it's not fully developed yet, but they're partnering up to actually bring that out. And then speaking of other future modes of transportation, Toyota's new hydrogen cell Mirai has been unveiled. The Mirai is not a new car, but there is a new design for it. The previous Mirai looked like a Prius mixed with the Jetsons in the worst way possible and is a hideous piece of crap. The new Mirai actually looks like a modern car. It's hydrogen fuel cell based, which having a car that looks good and not like they're trying to make it some stupid futuristic thing is a great move in the right direction. This is really where Tesla got everything right. They decided not to make things that look 
futuristic, but instead just made nice looking cars. So Toyota getting it right with the Mirai. And then also they have announced the 2021 RAV4 is going to have a plug-in hybrid option. So in case you want an SUV with better fuel economy, the plug-in hybrid RAV4 should be coming out sometime soon. But more electric car news, James Dyson, who is behind the Dyson vacuums, the Dyson Cyclone V10 ad spots, all of that, the, the Dyson hand dryers, the Dyson hair dryers, all of the Dyson products that everybody has come to know and love, well, they were reported to be working on an electric vehicle. However, James Dyson has announced that that project has come to an end, not because that the design didn't work out or they couldn't make a car, but really they just couldn't make a mass market version of it. It wouldn't be feasible for them to actually roll it out to the general consumer. I'm not sure I want a car looking like a vacuum anyways, uh, but also it does give a little bit of credence to what Tesla has been able to do. One of the first companies in the modern century to actually bring cars to mass production in the United States, Tesla's feet brought all the more into reality by the fact that they're producing 200,000 plus Model 3s this year. It's fantastic. Suck it, Dyson. I'm sure what Elon Musk is saying in his heart. Speaking of hearts, Got no good segue here. Amazon has announced that there's a new Kindle edition for children. It actually comes in slightly more expensive than the base model Kindle because it comes with a colorful cover for the Kindle so that children can enjoy it. And it comes in just a little bit under the paper white edition with the backlight. I'm not sure that I would get my kids a kids edition. I think I'd rather get them one with a backlight which would allow them to read at night. I don't know, that's, who, who cares? Children don't need to read anymore, do they? No, not even a little bit, because they got Twitch on Apple TV now. Apple TV has been updated to support Twitch. Why was it not there? Who knows? Okay, more Apple news. Seven nanometer supply of the A13 chip apparently was increased by Apple. They weren't expecting the demand for their new iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max. And so they went back to TSMC to request an increase in the amount of chips that they could be allocated, which likely will result in slowdowns of seven nanometer products by AMD. The Navi GPUs, the Ryzen 3000 CPUs might see a longer delay in production. This actually could be one of the reasons reasons why the 3950X was delayed until November, and it could be that even though it might come out in November, it could still be a paper launch where there's only a couple uh, units that float out there in the wild while AMD is struggling to uh, get more production space from them, from TSMC, because Apple is hogging it all, which it looks like they wanna hog more with the iPhone SE 2, which is supposed to be dropping in the first quarter of 2020. It's supposed to still have the A13 processor, uh, A3 gigs of RAM, and the iPhone 8 chassis. If it comes in at a fantastic price, it might not necessarily be a bad thing to pick up. The SE 2 gonna constrain seven nanometer supply even more, but you know what's not constraining supply of Mac products? Yeah, that's right, Final Cut Pro 10 just received an update for a new metal engine, which has brought over around 20% improvement on MacBook Pros and around 35% improvement on iMac Pros when it comes to editing and rendering videos on Final Cut Pro. So if you needed a reason to skip Adobe Premiere, this might be one of them. Reese is looking at me, funny, I don't like it, Mac boy. And then, Hulu has announced that they finally are just gonna do what every other video streaming service has done, and that is allow you to download videos. This would have been fantastic a month ago. How long, three weeks ago? When my wife was in the hospital with my son because she was in the middle of watching Scrubs on Hulu, but because we use a DNS reroute to watch Hulu in South Africa, she couldn't watch it on mobile data, so she had to stop watching the series. She had to watch something else. First world problems, I tell you, your kid's in the hospital, you can't watch things that you wanna watch. It's nonsense, Hulu. Thank you for fixing it finally. But Atari is left unfixed with their VCS emulator console thing that they're supposed to be coming out with as the lead architect Lee has left the company due to unpaid invoices by them which is ridiculous. This is a project that has been plagued by delays. We talked about it when I was in the United States last, which was early 2018. We made a video on this thing and it still is not out. It was supposed to be released last year, got delayed until March, 2020. And it's just not, it's probably not coming. Just, just emulate Atari stuff, my friends. But you know what you can emulate? Apple cards 
apparently. Yes, my friends, there is a report of the first Apple card being cloned, even though Apple says that this is a highly secure card because it doesn't have any numbers on it, there are still such things as card skimmers. And considering the fact that the United States likes to use chip technology with no pin, it just makes it so that they can easily be cloned and then used and it's, it's a giant mess. I actually get tons of looks here when I use my American cards because I have the chip, but I don't have a pin and that baffles every single teller that I, I check out with. And it bothers Reese so much because he thinks my card's insecure but I, I, he's insecure. That's really what this is about. Anyways, we're gonna end the episode of Hot News there. Thank you so much for watching this one. Don't forget to check out our merch down below in the video description. Use the coupon code PMKINS for just today on Saturday to get 10% off and support the UFD trip back to the United States so that we can seek my son's medical care. Thank you so much guys for support and loving us. And I'm just gonna leave now, bye. Shut up.